I call the um, policy manual subcommittee meeting um, to order. Today is Tuesday, November 28th. The time is 6.02 p.m. I'd like to do a roll call. Uh, Mr. Homer? Here. Mrs. Rebus Mendez? Here. Um, and the chair um, is present, myself, Joyce Asak. So the first item, actually let me just read one item. In addition to attending the public, can view this meeting via television on Comcast Channel 8 and 107.1 HD version and online via the link www.youtube.com backslash the Brockton channels. So um, we are gonna go on as far as our agenda for the evening. The first item on our agenda, I'm going to invite uh, Marcia Andrada Serpa to um, present um, policies IHB and G. You're going to go over them with us. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So it's this, this packet right here for the members that have it. No, it's this one right here. This one right here. This one, right? Okay. Perfect. This one that has the um, email. You ready? Thank sure. You. So this evening uh, we're going to discuss the homeschooling policy, and it was it's IHBG. Mm -hmm. You all have what you need. I have it in my packet. Yeah. Ms. Joe Homer, do you have that? Yeah, all set. Perfect. We can start reading the policy. Okay. So this is the proposed uh, policy. Would you just like me to read it? Sure. Thank okay. you. Okay. Mass General Laws require the school committee to determine that a homeschooling program meet with the minimum standards established for public schools in the Commonwealth prior to approving such a program. When a parent or guardian of a student below the age of 16 wants to establish a home-based educational program for their child. The following procedures shall be followed in accordance with the law. Prior to removing the child from public school, the parent guardian must writ, I'm sorry, submit written notification of establishment of the home-based program to the appropriate administrator 14 days before the program is established and resubmit on a notification on an annual basis. So this is submitting the educational plan for homeschooling. The parent must certify in writing on a form provided by the district. I have created an online form. It's on the back pages there in your packet. And it mimics the form that we used to have. Um, it's just available online for families to complete. Um, the form provided by the district asks for the name. It used to ask for the age. I am hoping that we can change that to the date of birth so that we're clear on whether or not the child is of compulsory school age. Place of residence and number of hours of attendance of each child in the program. The superintendent shall give the notice to produce records required by law if there's probable cause to believe the program is not in compliance with the law. Factors to be considered by the superintendent or school committee in deciding whether or not to approve the home education plan 
may be the proposed curriculum and the number of hours of instruction in each of the proposed subjects, the competency of the parents or guardian to teach the children, textbooks, workbooks, and other instructional aids to be used by the children, and lesson plans and teaching materials or manuals to be used by the parents or guardian. Periodic standardized testing of the children to ensure educational progress and the attainment of minimal standards. So this is the plan that you had um, previously. Um, my understanding it was last uh, from 2002, so we're looking to just move forward with uh, some changes to include the online. Um, so the form needs to be provided from the district to um, the families. So we're hoping that it's the online form. Again, we're asking for it to be the date of birth as opposed to simply the stated age. Now, there are areas, the procedures are outlined in the subsequent pages. Did you want me to read all of that or? <clears throat> so tonight, um, Donna, would we make a motion to add these um, as recommended um, as far as the online form, make the change to the date of birth, um, the procedures outlined, or should we get the recommendations, make the changes and come back and vote on them before the end of the year? as far as the policy? Because a lot of these policies, they had already gone through them that we're reviewing tonight back in June of 2022. So um, this is something new. I has never been seen. So this is, anybody. yeah, this is brand new. So this hasn't been updated in. I, J, and K have never been seen by anybody. Okay. Since 2002. So 2002. If you want to recommend. Yeah. Yeah. You want to recommend to ch the changes that Marcia has um, recommended to the school committee. I can put that in a concise form and it will go in the minutes and it will become part of the record. And if you guys recommend that that goes forward to the full school committee, then they can vote on it in sc full school committee. Okay. We'll do, we'll, we wouldn't um, have to meet again on it. Perfect. So we're going to go with that recommendation. Um, so we will take a getting motion. We don't need a motion tonight. We need a uh, recommendation to make the changes that were recommended by Marcia and uh, recommend that it goes to the committee of a whole for final review and approval. This, everything that we recommend tonight will go to the committee of the whole. Okay, so this but this is a brand new policy change. Well, it's really not a brand new. It's just instead of just presenting practically verbally what the parents would are going to do, mm -hmm. they fill out the form, and then it's reviewed so by my, BPS staff, right? And then it's either recommended to the full school committee that this child be allowed to be homeschooled. So as it stands, the online form that we've created mimics what was previously in a hard copy form. And there is a section that requests the information from the family, their address, um, contact information, the student information, um, again, is similar to what was asked in the past with the change asking for the date of birth and the proposed educational plan is also outlined um, there in the form. Uh, the addition, what we are hoping also to add and what I plan to do is at the end of the homeschool plan, we ask for evidence of progress. Um, and that is coming um, under my office now over at the school registration office. So upon that, with that review of the, at the end of it, um, 
we'll be able to look at if there was any if there was academic progress and that will help us make decisions for future approvals of plans thank you um, that makes sense because <clears throat> we had chatted and you had mentioned um, as far as seeing what the requirements were and show the proof the evidence of what they have been doing as far as the homeschooling so thank you for bringing this to our attention um, and bringing it forward so we can make these changes to better serve the families, um, the, you know, the homeschooling, and to make sure that our students are getting what right. they need and we can make sure that we're monitoring that. So um, we will get the changes as stated and then we will have this taken care of before the end of the year. Okay. Is there a time, do you need this um, done sooner for um, any approval for any homeschooling applications that as soon as you approve this, I will make sure that all of our current homeschool families receives the updated policy and so that they can be prepared for what is expected at the end of the year, et cetera. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, our attorneys don't need to review this by any, we're fine. We can just make these changes and we can add it on to the next school committee meeting? I would think so. Okay. But we'll do it for the next school, ne next official school committee meeting, okay. I believe. Um, December 5th? Uh, we'll have to do it for, for after that. Okay. Um, it'll be the next school committee meeting. Right. Otherwise, we'll do a special meeting. Okay? Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, we're fine with those changes. Yep. Perfect. <clears throat> next item on our agenda is reviewing um, Section G. We had pulled some policies aside. If I can invite uh, Dr. Moran. the microphone. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's on. Would you like me to go through the blue ones first? Yes, because um, I know there were some questions at the last meeting, so we pulled some policies aside that we were questioning. <clears throat> okay, the first item in blue is the staff personal security and safety policy. And as you can see, that the um, it's been updated to match the mask policy in its recent version. So I can go through that with you. And that would be um, GBGB. GBGB, yes. I can read through what the proposed. Recommendations are? Okay. Pardon me? I can read through the proposed recommendations? Yes. For the new one? Okay, great. Um, so this is staff, personal security, and safety. Through its overall safety program and various policies pertaining to school personnel, the committee will seek to assure the safety of employees during their working hours and assist them in the maintenance of good health. The superintendent may require an employee to submit a physical examination by a physician appointed to the school district whenever the employee's health appears to be a hazard to children or others in the school district or when a doctor's certificate is legally required to verify, uh, to verify need for sick leave. School employees, their families, and members of their household are eligible to use the confidential services provided by the municipality's employee assistance program. Just wanted to mention that at this time, we the district does not have an employee assistance program. We had one um, years ago. We were using All One Health, um, but we have not it hasn't been funded in a number of years. So at this time, we don't have it. So I guess if um, we could have a uh, that could end with employee assistance program, if um, applicable. I think one thing so that this, they were yeah, I was curious say, so about. This, this was withheld because there was additional language that was proposed that we held on making a, a vote to approve this one. We were waiting to find out from HR about uh, any groups that had any changes to language about um, a successfully passing a pre-employment physical exam. So we have not had um, employees provide any documentation of a pre-employment physical exam for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So that would um, need to be removed. So when I received this that was in red from 2016 and it was removed for the 2022 updated version so I believe it should be removed unless the school committee decides to require that which we have not required for years. Why was it um, 
it was for certain. So in the past, um, teachers used to need, they need to they needed to submit a TB test result, and they've not needed to do that for years. And for um, positions that are physical, such as custodial, maintenance, food service, um, there was talk of having them need to prove that they would be able to do the physical portions of the, the position. But that's not required at this time. Any other um, questions from the committee? <clears throat> no, not for that one. I, I don't have one that has red lines on it. That's why we were holding on to that one, I think, from the last time we met was I didn't see it. I thought that they were adding something new. So my apologies. Okay. Mrs. Mendez, you good with that? Okay. So then the next um, policy would be GB, oops, sorry. GBGB. GBGE. -G -G oh, we did GBG, so it's GBGE. E. Okay. Is the next one. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's the domestic violence leave policy. Um, this um, is missing, has been missing from the Brockton Public Schools policies as they haven't been updated in a number of years, and this is a newer policy. Um, so it was suggested that we adopt the one presented by MASK, which. Um, do you have that in front of you? It's approximately yes. two pages, three pages long? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is the one that mask use, masks, mask uh, uses. Okay. So that's from October 2014. Um, so staff who are currently employed, they don't have any access to the language here in this. They haven't seen this. Um, it's not part of their, a contract or anything? It's not part of the policies and it's not part of anyone's contract, okay. but um, we have had people contact us because they do know it's out there mm -hmm. and we've shared it with them, but it's not an official um, accepted, agreed upon school committee policy yet. Okay. But should be. Okay. I don't see anything in the language there that would keep me from approving it. Okay. Mrs. Mendez, you're fine? Yeah. Okay. That one looks good. So, um, so far we went over GBGB and GBGE. Um, the next one is GBGF, and that is uh, Family Medical Leave Act, and that was updated in 2022. Recommendations, I should say, to update, we're in 2022. Yes, this one is um, rather lengthy. We, ha we have used this policy in the Human Resources Department for anyone who is needed to access it, um, but it has not been voted on and approved by school committee at this time. Um, Again, this is something that the source is masked, so this is taken right out off the mask website. Okay, because there was a comment on here to um, just reach out to you to make sure if this is if that was uh, common practice. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions, uh, Mr. Homer, Mrs. Mendez? No, I was just looking at the. There was a comment that said, looking at a, a more robust policy and checking if. And a policy does not exist elsewhere, um, I guess, other than in the policy manual or anything like it that. It does not, but, no. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm fine with this one as, as well. This one, I don't see any reason. I think there's just one note at the end of that um, in Section 6 with a, a strike through for language related to COVID from the time of the pandemic. And as I think the recommendation is just to remove that one section, which I think a law expired on that one for the... FFRCA or something like that, expiring on uh, December, which says to be, in, to be in effect from December 30th, 31st, 2020. And Do I don't you know if that's that? anything that. Donna? I have all the strike throughs. Okay. Recommend deleting the COVID law. This has come and gone. Yeah, that's, it comes after the, the legal references, it's the source and legal references, yeah. It's at the very end. Yep, mm -hmm. at the end of section six. Yes, I agree that needs to be removed. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> Mrs. Mendez, you, you're okay with that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, next is GBJC, teacher's personnel file. Um, and there's a notation that says nothing in mask. So this must have been um, 
Currently, there's nothing in mask. So when these were looked at previously, um, they've sat around for so long mm -hmm. that now mask has updated some of their things. And when I was trying to format these to put on our website, I noticed it was missing okay. from mask. So um, this is a BPS specific mm -hmm. recommended to retain if HR recommends that it stays in. Um, I don't see a reason not to keep it, but um, it is very specific. It refers only to the teacher or the educator's personnel file. Um, if we do keep what is there, um, if you have a copy of them in front of you, the, um, the final sentence says the findings will be placed in the personnel file. Um, I would just change that to may be placed in the personnel file as um, oftentimes there are things that do not need to make it into the teacher's personnel file. Um, So um, with that minor change, with um, just the word change to maybe, um, Mrs. Mendez, Mr. Homer, um, any questions on that? There's a note here, too, that just mentions that if it aligns with the CBA and current practice, too. And just, I think if, if it's expected and if it's in the bargaining agreement, if it's in the contract, then. I don't see any reason not to retain it. It's yes. If it's expected that it's. There's contract language for the um, educator CBA that any time a, a complaint or a commendation is given about a teacher that it's brought to the teacher's attention in a timely fashion. Um, so that it, it is in line with that. And again, just that piece about it may be placed in the teacher's personnel file. It does state in that. Policy: All letters will be kept by the building principal. So, oftentimes, they are they are maintained at the building level versus sent to human resources for the teacher's personnel file. So, is that up to is that the discretion of the principal whether or not that would be placed in the personnel file? Uh, it really depends on um, again the severity of it. Some um, we use progressive discipline when it ha comes to a complaint. So, there are often times when um, the first incident remains at the building level, and then if there's a, pr a subsequent issue, um, it is then that's documented and placed in the teacher's file. So sometimes it's using the steps of progressive discipline. The first letter would not go into the personnel file, but the second one would go in and would reference the first letter. Got it. Okay. Right. We're good to move. Okay. okay. Perfect. So um, the next um, policy we have, employment of principals, uh, GCBB. So there is a reference that mask policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Um, it wasn't legally required to have that in there, but it, they have updated it. Um, so we have GC. I agree it's not legally required, but um, I don't see any reason not to continue to maintain this policy. Perfect. Um, any of the members have any questions on that one? No, I agree. They should retain this one. Okay, so it does. It, it has been updated to the most recent mask um, policy, so it does reflect the recent version of it. Mrs. Mendez, are we good with that? Okay. And the next um, policy we have. So these remain green. So. These are the ones we asked HR to look okay. at. This was significantly different in mask, the latest version. This was what the lawyers had said. Um, okay. But th we still wanted to human review resource with, okay. I just didn't, um, to speak with us about okay. it. Mm -hmm. So the next one is, um, let's see, we have GCBC, Professional Staff Supplementary Pay Plans. And it yeah. says mask policy updated and reflects its most recent version. Um, but the committee pulled that out. There are some questions just about the third paragraph about um, teacher offered and undertake supplementary pay assignments. Just the following language was just kind of questioned by legal. A teacher who is offered and undertakes a supplementary, supplementary pay assignment will receive a supplementary contract specifying the pay, duration, and terms of assignment. 
if a teacher will not be extended the assignment for the following school year but will remain on the teaching staff, he or she will be notified in writing prior to the expiration of the contract. Upon termination of the assignment, the supplementary, the supplementary pay will cease. That is all accurate, that if for any reason there are, there's a reduction of force or elimination of a position and that supplementary pay is um, reduced, the, um, the teacher would be notified and the additional pay would be decreased. So that's so it's current, current best practice? Yes. Okay. Any further questions from the committee? Okay. We'll go so. on to um, philosophy of staff development, uh, GCIA. So this one, I believe the two updates were numbers four and five, that um, leaves of absence for graduate study, study research, and travel. Um, and again, that would be upon um, request of and approval by the superintendent. Partial payment of tuition for approved courses is um, something that the district has never been able to fund. Um, I understand that's from MASC, but we have not been able to do that. And I, um, if we put a caveat that um, Obviously, if we had the funding to do that, but otherwise, um, we have not made payments for approved courses. We offer lots of courses through the district um, at either um, a reduced rate or no pay if they're um, provided through the district. Mm -hmm. So but we have not paid tuition unless we've received grant funding, which we've done as well. So if you'd like to add that, that would have to just have a caveat that um, pr uh, if there's funding available. So, Dr. Moran, your recommendation would be to um, add under number five, um, partial payment of tuition for approved courses if funding is available. Yes. Okay. The committee um, have any other recommendations? No, that makes sense. Okay. So we will make those changes on that. Thank you. Um, and the next item is retirement of support staff members, GDQC. It's actually the last page. Okay, currently there is no longer anything in MASC that refers to this, and Human Resources provides this information at every school committee meeting, so it, it's already something that's um, done with regularity. So this remains with no changes? Yeah, the superintendent the will inform, inform the committee. HR does that anyway. We do get those um, the notifications on a regular basis. Yeah, they were in every school committee book. <coughs> yeah, on a week, um, every meeting or. Yep. If this is to remain, um, the last sentence that states that when a resignation is accepted by the superintendent, the employee may be expected to continue in service at his or her assigned duties for a period of 30 days after submission. Um, I just want to stress may be expected um, because there are often times when we do not enforce that for whatever reason. But we could ask them to stay for the 30 days, but um, we may not. Well, that's no longer in the most current um I think the proposed one does not include that language. Yeah, the most current It's just that they'll submit their resignation. It's just that the school committee yeah. will be notified. Okay. Then on a regular, you know. Perfect. Any um, recommendations from the committee? No, I, I think we've done it. It just says we were, we were going to check to see if it's accurate and checking to see if we have the most up-to-date thing. It looks like we didn't, but I would go with the new one that removes that language. I would recommend taking that language out and going with the proposal, the proposed language we have here that omits that piece. And the only other thing, Kathy, the criminal offender record information? Yes. It was taken out of G, or it was recommended to be removed from G because it already exists in A, ADDA and ADDA. 
hyphen R. Sure, it doesn't need to be in two places. Were there other questions about the Cori policy, or was it just I thought where Joyce to place might it? have questions yes. about the Cori. Um, I know we had met with some questions on that a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, I, which policy? Because I don't have that in my packet. It was an orange strike view for the criminal record um, GBEAA. Yes, yeah, seven. Seven. Yeah. It's right here. Three I gave it to G. you with the oh, with the agenda. Perfect. Right. It's with um, the agenda. So I do know. I do know we had gone over some questions and some recommendations. Um, I know as far as the quarry check, background check, I know we had talked about um, whether whether they're a BPS employee coming through the HR department that they have to have a quarry check and whether it's a third party that we source out to that we need to make sure that they do the quarry checks and we somehow get, get a we can't, there was a way that we just need to make sure anyone that's going into our schools has a quarry check. Yes, um, so there's a difference between the quarry and the fingerprints. Anyone who works or volunteers in the Brockton Public Schools, the quarry is run through the Brockton Public Schools. For fingerprints, that's different. Um, the fingerprints could be run by, they go through um, DCJIS, but they can, if if someone did their fingerprints and had them sent to another district, we can re accept a suitability determination letter. Um, but to be clear, everyone who works or volunteers in this district, uh, the quarry is run through the Brockton Public Schools. We're not, we're not allowed to share quarry information with others, and we wouldn't accept it. We would run it ourselves. There's no cost to the member um, or the volunteer, so we run them ourselves. Okay, so anyone, whether they're, we contract, say we're contracting a company that's mm -hmm. bringing their own employees that are working with our um, BPS students, mm -hmm. I know there was, we want to make sure that they have the quarry checks. Yes, And that you Brockton. have a copy of those. So that's in here now? Because uh, I, know, I know we met a while ago on that. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that the quarry checks, no matter who it is, if they have a, an ID and they're in our schools, that they have, we have a record of their quarry checks. Background checks, first paragraph, last one. I think we were going to check on something with Sarah. ADDA, that one. ADDA. It's and the last sentence in the first paragraph. School volunteers. School volunteers and subcontractors, laborers who may have direct and unmonitored access, contact with students must continue to submit state criminal offender record information, Corey checks. And that would happen through the, that comes through the district. Yeah. So how far, how many years, how far back do, I think we were talking about ex going further back than what we had in our original policy. So um, the, there's a system-wide quarry conducted in the district every three years. The last one was done in 2013, sorry, 2023. So we'll do it again in 2026. Um, that is for all empl current employees. Um, for volunteers, we run those annually. Okay. So. Perfect. And then again, before employment, if there's a new employee, um, that is run upon um, recommendation for hire and the person would not start until the quarry has come back and been reviewed. Okay. Any members with any other um, comments or recommendations? Nope. For right now, I'm okay with this. I mm -hmm. just want to go back and look at our, my notes from sure. when we met. Because I just want to make sure, I know there was something, I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, um, we had, you, there was a meeting that we had in the conference room yes, to a couple yes. of us. Um, I believe the question about that was, what are the guidelines that we use? So I do have those for you if you want to take Perfect. a look at them. Yes, as long as, because I know we were trying to um, do a deeper dive sometimes. Sure. Thank you. So the last time that the policy was reviewed was in 2011. Um, if you turn to the last page, um, that was a draft at the time, but these are the review guidelines that we use, that I use. Um, and you can review, I can read through some of them, but um, I think this the question was if these were stringent enough. I, 
I'm remember because I'm yeah. thinking the five years. I'm thinking mm -hmm. I think we need to look a little further. Sure. Can we just pull this one out and maybe revisit this one? Sure. Because I do know. Um, I, I after looking at this, I just want to take a look at my notes. Sure. Um, after that meeting, because I know we were making recommendations to um, maybe extend it a little further than five years, um, depending on some of the depending what the crime is. Sure. Yeah, okay. and again, these these were not have not been revisited since 2011. So, um, I'm happy to update them. Okay. And Don, I have extra copies for the rest of them. So, if we members. can just um, pull Thank you. <laughs> AD, is it all part of one um, ADAA. ADD. See, so it's A. Attention and destruction. Uh, these are all part of ADDA. Yep. So if we can, if the committee, um, I'd like to pull that aside to just look into that a little further because we haven't visited this since 2000, I believe 11, Dr. Moran mentioned. And I know um, I know some committee members were, were mentioning we might want to make some minor changes. So we'll put this one aside for now. Mm -hmm. um, the ADDA. I'm going to hold that. And I believe that's all we had, correct, um, Donna? Yep, that's all on that Perfect. So um, we can go ahead. If the committee's okay with what we went over, we can, um, if I can get a motion, I can, we can read all the policies and go ahead and approve these policies. Um, you want to, you're going to read the uh, the blue ones that we went over tonight? Is I say we read the blue ones because I believe we've already, we've um, already, done the we've already approved the others. Yeah. It was just the blue ones that we pulled pulled aside. So, Oh, yeah. wait a minute. Excuse me. Oops, sorry. Uh, GBECA, Internet Acceptable Use Policy. Oh. There was a question if a pop-up happens, mm -hmm. and yes, it does. A pop-up saying somebody using our Internet um, has to check that off. And Good. Yeah. we just wanted to make sure it was in place them. and it was and working it is functioning. There. Okay, that's great. It is okay. Yeah. So, so um, ones on the yellow one. So we can. I'll go through. Um, these are all the G policies. So personnel goals G A, criminal offender record information quarry G B E A A. Uh, Internet acceptable use policy G B E C A. Staff Personnel Security and Safety, GBGB. Domestic Violence Leave Policy, GBGE. Family Medical Leave Act, GBGF. Teacher's Personnel File, GBJC. Professional Staff Salary Schedules, GCBA. Employment of Principals, GCBB. Professional Staff Supplementary Pay Plans, GCB, GCBC. Philosophy of Staff Development, GCIA. Resignation of staff, Professional Staff Members, GCQD. Retirement of Professional Staff Members, GCQE. Retirement of Support Staff Members, GDQC. GCDE. Oh, I was down here. Did we miss GCDE? Retirement of Professional Staff Members. Oh, there we go. Yep. Yep. GC. GCQE, I don't have a DE. I have GDQC. Yep. Okay, that's retirement of support, support staff members, GD, GDQC. So uh, if we can get a motion uh, to approve the yeah. policies as, as presented. You need a motion to uh, recommend to the committee for approval? Is that what it is? Um, yes. Yeah. So You're I'm, recommending yep. to take this to full school committee. Yep. So yeah, I'd make a motion to, for the subcommittee to present these items to the full school committee for approval. Second. So a motion has been made by Mr. Homer and properly seconded by Mrs. Mendez. All in favor, just show of hands. Um, unanimous. And that will go to um, the committee of, of a whole. We'll have that presented at the December second December meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Next item we have is review section I. Um, actually, before we review section I, if the, if the record can reflect, 
that we have um, policy ADDA, the background checks, to um, come back and review that? Yep. Okay. And then let's see what we have here. This one, personnel rules. All right. So we have section I. So the way that these are broken down is we have uh, mask policy, which is in yellow, recommendation to remove, which is in a um, peach color. Mask policy recommend to add is in a pink, and BPS specific is in blue. So um, the ones that are recommended to re remove, if anyone has any questions as we review them, um, let me know. If the, if the committee has any questions on any of them. And then the ones that are in blue are, um, have been looked at and recommended to delete, is that? Retain, recommended to retain. Yes. So I can go through them if you'd like. We can do them by color. Okay, so mask policy. In, um, so instructional goals was recommended to remove IA. I have a question. Sure. So IA on the comments, it says that it's a BHC, BHS specific policy and that it's going to be reestablished when there's district goals because this was last updated in 2002. But isn't this policy what um, requires of district goals? The instructional goals, that's the purpose of this policy, right? We can, we can take a look at it, IA. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead. So instructional goals, the primary function of a school program is the instruction of students. All staff activity and effort shall be directed toward providing a high quality, effective, and ever improving instruct instructional program. There are primarily three functions involved in carrying out the instructional program, which is the operating function, the coordinating and developing function, and the evaluating function. The operating function involves classroom instruction and providing program management. The coordinating and developing function includes monitoring activities, curriculum development, in-service education, and special services. The evaluation function involves data collection and synthesis and establishing future direction. The superintendent of schools, after conferring with the staff, parents, and students, shall formulate a list of objectives for the impending school year and publicize them after the approval of the school committee. Instructional priorities shall be included among these objectives. I just don't see why would we get rid of it. It's like what we need, right? Yeah, no, 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 it's not, the, I, don't, I don't think they're recommending for you to get rid of it. I think they're recommending for it to be revisited every year and updated to reflect the most recent superintendent goals for the system. Okay, but we have that information already from, right? The, what, the goals of well, the last this year, yes. Yeah. So why won't we just update them then? Yeah, it looks it's just to update annually. It, yeah. Annually is yeah. what that, that's what looks different, is that instead of setting three or five year plans that we don't revisit this, this is more specific to say an annual update on those. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you leave it, but it's it's the idea that we would revisit the annual goal. And yeah, because you'd make when that it's choice, a not not to remove anything yeah, from it. Required. Yeah. 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 I think I think the comment was confusing, but I don't I, I don't think they meant to say remove the whole policy. No, because if you look at the comment, it says BPS specific policy recommendation to remove and revisit when establishing annual district goals. This policy was la and it, it was last updated in 2002, but yeah, the way, it's, the way I'm understanding it is yeah. well, it's just that the instructional goals in 2002 are vastly different than the instructional goals of now. So this policy really should have been updated. It's been 21 years. So that's what I'm saying because it doesn't look like there's frequency and update of these policies. I don't see this being updated annually at all. Mm -hmm. But when I look at this policy, it's like a blueprint of what should be happening. So that's what I'm saying. It should remain so that can continue to happen. Yeah, I agree. I don't know why they had the word removed there because I don't think they meant for it to be removed. I think they meant for it to be revisited. 
but I agree with Cynthia. I think so we, we leave it in, in place. Okay. I, I would recommend we leave it in place. I Not think removing, I th right? Correct. Yeah, I think you're right. It, it's it's very concrete in what we should be doing every year. Yeah. Yeah. To um. I, I would just make the recommendation that we, um, instead of removing that, that we would just bring that to the full committee for just as part as one to retain to approve to retain okay that's, but know, this that's was my suggestion this reviewed um last year no okay. nobody's ever looked at so these. this is brand new um, yeah and honestly when i go to format this to post it on the website i'm going to go back and look at what mask has is currently recommended recommending and it might change, in which case I would recommend that I make a list of these and bring them back to the next policy manual subcommittee and look at it again. Okay. Just as that specific policy should be brought up at the annual meeting every year or it should be after the, the superintendent presents their goals, mm -hmm. it should be updated every year. It should. I, I was just thinking about. Yeah, I think I think I think Mr. Rivas Mendez is on the right track. Where I think it's it's a policy to to revisit it every year is is, is what we want the language to say. So mask may have different language, but I think for Brockton Public Schools, it's probably not a bad idea for us to be even more strict on making sure that the superintendent's pr providing updated annual goals based on the data. I think that's a, you know revisiting it. Okay. We can, um, and we can bring that to the committee of a whole as well. So um, that we're going to just leave. So even though it's uh, recommended to remove, we're just going to um, pull pull instructional instructional goals IA. We're going to pull that out and revisit that that policy. Okay. Um, the next one is academic freedom. Uh, IB, mask policy was updated to reflect its most recent version. The next one is school calendar, IC hyphen E. Uh, it said missing policy recommendation to remove. Uh, I mean, the school calendar is, is, is voted on on a yearly basis. Um, I see E. Yeah, I think if there's a policy that the school committee approves it, if that's in a different part of the program, then it doesn't need to be in Section I. As yeah, long I as we have a policy for it somewhere else, here, yeah. it makes sense so that it's just not duplicated. Okay. I would just say we just got to double check and find out where that is in the policy if it's not in Section I. Yeah, there's nothing here. Uh, so it is missing. So, um, so school calendar, we're going to pull that one out as well. I C hyphen E. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, School year, school calendar, I mean, that would probably fall under that as well. Let's just see. School year, school calendar, and that is um, school year, school calendar, IC, uh, backslash ICA, mask, policy missing from BPS policies, recommendation to add. Um, school day ID, these were all in 2019, so they're were, they were a little more recent than the 2002 ones. Um, so school day is mask policy, it was missing from the BPS policies. There's a recommendation to add that. Organization of instruction, it's no, it says no longer in mask. Mask policy missing from, that's IE, mask policy missing from BPS policies. And there was a recommendation to add. Those were all um, last updated in 2019. I'll move on to curriculum development. It was combined with IGD, so IGA. Um, Mask policy was updated to reflect its most recent version. Support services programs, IGB, mask policy, it was missing from our BPS policies and it was recommended to add. Curriculum uh, adoption, that was combined with IGA, so IGA and IGD. Um, IGA was added to that, so mask policy, updated to reflect its most recent version. Curriculum uh, guidelines course outlines, IGE. Recommendation to remove. Basic instructional program, IHA. Recommendation to remove. Physical education, IHAE. Recommendation to remove. 
career education, it's no longer in MASC. IHAI, and that was a MASC policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Occupational education admission, IHAIA, BPS specific, uh, redundant recommendation to remove. Technology vision and mission statements, IHAJ, BPS specific recommendation to retain. Health education, IHAM, mask policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Health education, IHAM hyphen R. Uh, mask policy, it was missing from the Brockton uh, BPS policies and it was recommended to add. Parent notification rel relative to sex education, IHAMA. Coding corrected to read IHAMA from IHAM hyphen R. Mask policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Teaching about drugs, alcohol, and tobacco, IHAMB. And that was updated in 2016, so that wasn't too long ago. Uh, that was a mask policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Um, work experience opportunities, IHAQ, BPS specific, um, it was redundant, recommendation to remove. Specific instructional programs and accommodations, IHB, mask policy was updated to reflect its most recent version. Um, students receiving SPED services outside their regular um, ED classes, IHB hyphen R, BPS specific redundant recommendation to remove. Programs for students with disabilities, IHBA, mask policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Observations of special education programs, IHBAA, mask policy was missing from the BPS policies, recommendation to add. Programs for students with disabilities, IHBB, policy code corrected from IHBB, to IHBA, MASC policy was updated to reflect its most recent version. Gifted and talented education, IHBB, BPS specific recommendation to retain. Com compens compensator, <laughs> can't even talk. Compensatory education, IHBD, MASC policy missing from BPS policies, recommendation to add. Bilingual instruction, IHBE, BPS specific recommendation to retain. English as a second language, IHBEA, mask policy was updated to reflect its most recent version. Homebound instruction, IHBF, and that was updated in 2020. Uh, mask policy was missing from the BPS policies and it was recommended to add. Homeschooling, IHBG, uh, mask policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Homeschooling, IHBG hyphen E, BPS specific redundant recommendation to remove. Alternative school programs, IHBH, mask policy was updated to reflect its most recent version. Alternative school programs, um, IHBH hyphen E, BPS specific redundant recommendation to remove and replace with IHBH. Mag magnet schools, IHBHB, BPS specific recommendation to retain. Remote learning, IHBH, and that was updated in 2020. Mask policy was missing from the BAPS policies, recommendation to add. Remote learning addendum, IHBH hyphen E, that was also updated in 2020. Mask policy was missing from BPS policies, recommendation to add. Um, summer schools, IHCA, mask policy was updated to reflect its most recent version. Advanced College Placement Courses, IHCD, BPS specific recommendation to remove. Library resource, oh sorry. Um, advanced College uh, Placement Courses, IHCD. Did I do that one? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, library resources, IHAC, BPS specific recommendation uh, to remove and replace with mask policies, IJL and IJLA. Reconsideration of instructional resources, I, uh, sorry, IIAE, uh, BPS specific recommendation to remove. Reconsideration of library materials, IIAE hyphen R, BPS specific recommendation to remove and replace with mask policies, IJL and IJLA. 
Student schedules and course loads, IIE. BPS specific recommendation to remove. Instructional materials, IJ. Mass policy was updated to reflect its most recent version. Oh boy, we got another page going. So the next page we have um, reconsideration of instructional resources, IJ hyphen R. I'm gonna just double check the time. Um, mass policy is missing from BPS policies, recommendation to add. Uh, library materials selection and adoption, IJL. Mask policy update to reflect its most recent version. Library materials, IJL hyphen R. BPS specific recommendation to remove. Library resources, IJLA. Mask policy missing from BPS policies, recommendation to add. Specific interest materials selection and adoption, IJM. BPS specific recommendation to remove. Access to digital resources, IJND. Mask policy missing from BPS policies, recommendation to add. Internet acceptable use, IJNDB. Move to policy GBECA, recommendation to remove. Internet publication, IJNDC. And this was also updated in 2015. Mass policy missing from BPS policies, recommendation to omit. Social media, IJNDD. Mass policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Field trips, IJOA. Mass policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Field trips. Uh, backslash not school sponsored, IJOAA, BPS recommendation to omit. Community resource person speakers, resource persons, um, backslash speakers, IJOB, mask policy update to reflect its most recent version. School volunteers, IJOC, mask policy update to reflect its most ver uh, recent version. Academic achievement, IK. Um, grading systems junior in senior high school, IKA. Examinations, IKAA. Those were all BPS specific recommendations to omit. Student progress reports to parents, IKAB. Mask policy was updated to reflect its most recent version. Parent conferences, IKACA. Homework policy, IKB. Honor roll, IKD. Those were all specific recommendations to omit. Promotion and retention of students, IKE. Mask policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Promotion and retention of kindergarten through grade six, IKEA. Promotion and retention of junior high students, IKEB. Promotion and retention of high school students, IKEC. Those were all BPS specific recommendation to omit. Graduation requirements, IKF. Evaluation of instructional programs, IL. Those are both mass policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Test and assessment administration. ILB, BPS specific recommendation to omit. Student submission to educational surveys and research, ILD, mass policy is missing from BPS policy, recommendation to omit. <coughs> sorry. Um, Is there a recommendation sorry. to add? What is, um, what was the last one? Did ILD, that was the student submission to educational ILD, surveys. Thank you. Was that um, mass policy missing from BPS, recommendation to add? <coughs> I apologize. Recommendation to add. Okay. Thank you, yes. Mr. Homer. Yes, okay. Teaching activities and presentations. IMA, mass policy update to reflect its most recent version. Teaching about controversial issues and controversial speakers. IMB, mass policy update to reflect its most recent version. Inviting public officials and candidates for public office to speak. Um, that is IMC. BPS specific recommendation to omit. School ceremonies and obs uh, observances, IMD. Mask policy update to reflect its most recent version. Animals in school, IMG. Mask policy missing from BPS policies recommendation to add. Service animals in school, IMGA. Mask policy missing from BPS policies recommendation to add. Mm -hmm. So we just went through um, the I policies. If any of the members have any questions on those? Okay. No. Otherwise, if I can get a motion to approve those as, as, um, as stated, and I need a second. Yeah, motion. So, so we're only, actually, we're pulling um, out of all of these, we're gonna remove uh, instructional goals, IA, in school calendar, IC hyphen E. Otherwise, the rest of the policies as stated. Uh, a motion to motion to approve the policies that were stated. 
Uh, Paul, motion's been made by Mrs. Mendez. Yep. To be presented to school committee for a full, full school committee for approval, yes. Uh, seconded. Uh, to be, um, <coughs> so the motion was made to move these policies to the committee of a whole mm -hmm. uh, for review and approval. And um, do I have a second? Yes. Motion's been made by Mrs. Mendez and probably seconded by Mr. Homer. All in favor, show of hands. And that is unanimous. Uh, we are running short on time. So I am going to ask that we, um, if I can get a motion to remove um, section J and K, um, to, to remove them from the agenda and put them on the next agenda, um, because we are running a little over time for our school committee meeting. Yeah, maybe I make a motion to suspend um, those two item agenda items, uh, re the review of section J and the review of section K. So motion to uh, suspend those items from this meeting and uh, propose to continue those at next meeting and second meeting in December. Second. So a motion has been made by Mr. Homer, properly seconded by Mrs. Mendez, a show of hands. And that's unanimous. So we will add those to the next agenda. Um, uh, do we have anything under um, other business? No. Nope. So we will we will have another meeting in December to review some of the policies that we were um, going over this evening. So since we don't have any other business, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion's been made by Mrs. Mendez, probably seconded by Mr. Homer. Um, all in favor, show of hands. 